Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all again in our channel that is best note tutorials and uh, I hope you all are fit and fine. So we should be ready to learn few more MCQs and today's MCQs are related to um, theory. So please be attentive and give due attention. Okay, let's begin. Let's begin today's MCQ. And today is day 12th so we are going to read the questions and we are going to discuss the answers as well as we do every day so let's begin with the day 12th question answers who among the following belongs to the new criticism option a Wimsat option 2 man Option 3, Ransom and Option 4, Robinson. Choose the correct code. Here your questions options are Is it 1 and 2 that is correct or 1 and 3 or 1, 2 and 3 or Option D all of the above. So here your option B is correct. The major critics of new criticism were Richards, T. S. Eliot, F. R. Lewis, and J. C. Ransom, Kenneth Brooks, W. K. Wimsat, Alan Tate, and Robert Penn Warren. So let's begin to question number two. Which of the given statement is not correct about the general, belief, just general basic English dictionary? Option A. A is the first word of the dictionary. Option B. The four kinds of meanings are introduced by Richards, that is sense, tone, intention and feelings. Option C. Richards along with C. K. Orden wrote this book with total 950 words. Option D. Ogden assumed that any student should be already familiar with 200 international words. So here your correct option goes with option C that is Richards along with C. K. Ogden wrote this work with total 950 words. Let's move ahead. Let's see the highlighters uh, to analyze the answer. The General Basic English Dictionary was published in 1930. Richards along with C.K. Ogden wrote this book with total 850 words. The full title is Basic English, a general introduction with rules and grammar. A is the first word in the dictionary. Basic English is an English-based controlled language created by linguist and philosopher C.K. Ogden. Full form is Charles K. Ogden as an international auxiliary language and as an aid for teaching English as a second language. Next point is the four kinds of meanings are introduced by Richards, that is, Sense, tone, intention and feeling. Their views were Ogden's associate that is I.A. Richards promoted its use in schools of China and he allowed only 18 verbs which he called operators. His general introduction says there is no verbs in basic English. Ogden wrote in the system of basic English, what the world needs most is about 1,000 more dead language and one more, one more alive. Next point is, he prescribed that only one student should learn an additional 150 word list along with 850 basic words for everyday work in some particular field by adding a list of 100 words particularly useful in a general field. 
example science verse business etc along with a 50 words list from a more specified sorry specialized subject of the general field to make a basic 1000 vocabulary for everyday work and life Further, other points are Ogden assumed that any student should be already familiar with 200 international words. Therefore, a first level student should graduate with the core vocabulary of around 1200 words. According to Ogden, a realistic general core vocabulary could contain 2000 words, the core 850 plus 2 100 international words plus 1000 words for the general field of trade economic and science his lesser known concept feed forward according to richards concept of anticipating the effect of one word by acting as our own critic let's move ahead here richard served as a mentor and teacher of William Empson and F. R. Lewis and the other two are influenced are Cleeth Brook and Alan Tate. According to OED, Richards coined the term Feed Forward in 1951 at the 8th Annual Messy Conference. The International Fallacy, sorry, Intentional Fallacy is Option A. It is the interpretation of an evaluating a literal work literary work by reference of evidence outside the text itself option b it claimed to be the error of interpreting and evaluating interpreting and evaluating a literary work by reference of evidence outside the text itself option c it claimed to be evaluating a literary work by reference of evidence inside the text itself option d it claimed to be the error of interpreting and evaluating a literary work by reference of evidence inside the text itself so here your correct option is option b that is it claimed to be the error of interpreting and evaluating a literary work by reference of evidence outside the text itself Highlighter says, the intentional fallacy, that is false appearance, okay, fallacy means false appearance, which was published in 1954. In his essay, Verbal Icon, in 1954, it appeared that he wrote with Monroe Beardsley, first published in the Sewanee Review in 1946 and derived from confusion between the poem and its origin. Essentially, it occurs when a critic puts too much emphasis on personal, biographical and external information while analyzing a work. Intentional fallacy is claimed to be the error of interpreting and evaluating a literary work by reference of evidence outside the text itself for the intention, the design and purpose of its author. General Generally, it is a false idea that many people believe is true. It is it used to describe the problem inherent in trying to judge a work of art by assuming the intent or purpose of the artist who created it. Let's move to the next question. Question number four. In the well wrought urn, the poem are meant to be option A, an example on which generalization explicated option b the concrete examples on which generalization are to be based option c the general examples on which generalizations are to be based option d the concrete examples on which specialization is to be based so here your options are your correct option is the concrete example on which generalization are to be based let's see the Highlighters now in order to make it very clear. The well wrought urn 
studies in the structure of poetry which was published in 1947 this work was published in 1947 brooks best known work and it is a collection of essays the title is taken from john don's poem the canonization and keats poem ode to sorry ode on a gracian urn this work is divided into two into 11 chapters 10 of which attempt close reading of celebrated english poems from verses in shakespeare's macbeth of yeats among school children the 11th famous chapter entitled the hearsays of paraphrase is a polemic against the use of paraphrase in describing and criticizing a poem this chapter is followed by two appendices criticism history and critical relativism relativism and the problem of belief it is considered a seminal text in the new critical school of literary criticism most of the book's content has been previously published before 1947 the book was written in reaction to a prominent stream of literary criticism the historicist biographical the bulk of the book is devoted to close reading of poems by john donne shakespeare milton alexander pope and william wordsworth keats lord tennyson yeats thomas gray and t s eliot in the theory in the theory illuminates practice and vice versa the poem the poems are meant to be the concrete examples on which generalization are to be based thus the first chapter tells us in its title that poetic language is the language of paradox next point says the unique contribution of this of his work is Uh, is that it combines the close reading analysis of the previous volume while answering some of the criticism directed and brooks theory directed at brooks theory let's move ahead let's move to question number 5 the language of paradox is option a the language appropriate and inevitable to poetry option b the flawless language of poetry option c the language appropriate to poetry and option d the language hard and inevitable to poetry so here your correct option is the first one that is the language appropriate and inevitable to poetry okay let's see the highlighter now the language of paradox by cleet Brook, an active member of new criticism of new critical movement, outlines the use of reading poems through paradox as a method of critical interpretation. Paradox is poetry, means that tension at the surface of a verse can lead to apparent contradictions and hypocrisies. Brook's seminal essay. the language of paradox lays out his argument for the centrality of paradox of demonstrating that paradox is the language appropriate and inevitable to poetry question number 6 the hearsay by paraphrase is used by brooks in his work option a understanding fiction option b the well wrought urn option c understanding poetry option d the relation of the alabama here option b that is the well wrought urn is the correct option the hearsay of paraphrase it means the meaning in the poetry is irreducible and controversial statement of a text brook in his the wall 
the well wrought on studies in the structure of poetry coined this phrase it is a title of a chapter in the well wrought on in his summary chapter brooks Ar brooks articulates his position that it is hearsay to paraphrase a poem when trying to get at its meaning because poems are not simple simply messages expressed in flowery language the language is crucial in determining the message form is content question number 7 ransoms which of the given work he insisted that criticism should be based on a study of structure and texture option a the gentle two gentlemen in bones option b chills and fever option c grace after meat option d the new criticism here your option is new criticism let's see let's see the highlighters new criticism was published in 1941 for uh, this work ransom is considered to be the founder of new criticism in the work of in the work he insisted that criticism should be based on a study of its structure and texture this work was organized this work was organized the principles of new criticism in which the emphasize in which he emphasized close reading of a text and talk talks about total structure and local texture which among the following work was not written by levis option a dickens the novelist option b the common pursuit option c revaluation tradition development in english poetry and option d grace after meat here your option is grace after meat which is correct option levis contribution for continuity levis published in 1933 it was selected for scrutiny essays with culture and the environment a joint effort with denis thompson the common pursuit was was published in 1952 and it was his best known and most influential work in the great tradition in the year 1948 he put forward a case for moral seriousness as a criterion for great work of art scrutiny one of the most influential literally literary periodicals of the 20th century was edited which was edited until 1953 was founded by him in 1950s in the introduction to mill on bentham and coleridge levis set out the historical importance of ut literarian thoughts in revolution tradition and development in english poetry 1936 he extended his survey of english poetry back to 17th century i hope this much is clear to you all let's move to question number 9 which number 9 is which of the following statement is not correct about russian formalism question number 9 which of the following statement is not correct about russian formalism option a it was a reaction against russian symbolist movement option b formalism as a movement was suppressed under stalin's dictatorship option c roman Jep jacobson boris eisenbaum gray were the major formalist option d the term formalism was derived from the central tenets of formalist thoughts so here your option c is the correct one that is roman jacobson boris ekenbaum gray were major formalists russian formalism was the duration between 1910 to 1960 russian formalism was an influential school of literary criticism in russia in 1930s to 19 sorry 1910s to 1930s it was a reaction against russian symbolist movement it exerted 
a major influence on thinkers like Mikhail Batin and Yuri Lotman and on structuralism on a whole. The term formalism and was derived from the central tenet of formalist thought. It believed that there was a fundamental opposition between literary language, poetic language and ordinary language. Russian formalism made a distinction between The term formalism was derived from the central tenets of formalist thoughts. It believed that there was a fundamental opposition between literary language, poetic language and ordinary language. And uh, Russian formalism made a distinction between Siozet or plot and fabula, that is a story. It included it includes highly influential Soviet scholars, Soviet scholars, Victor Sklovsky, then Yusri Tenyanov, then Vladimir Prop. Roman Jacobson, Roman Jacobson, then Boris Tomaski, Grigory Gukovsky, Boris Ikembam. All of them revolutionized literary criticism between 1914 and 1930s by establishing the specificity and anatomy of poetic language and literature. It described two distinct movements. Option, uh, sorry. Next point is the opposers in Saint Petersburg and Moscow linguistic circle founded by R. Jacobson in nineteen fourteen. Formalism as a movement was suppressed under Stalin's dictatorship around nineteen twenty nine. After that center of the movement moved to Czechoslovakia. When formalism was suppressed in 1929 by the Soviets and the centers of formalist studies of literature moved to Czechoslovakia, then there it was continued by the member of the Prague linguistic circle included Roman Jacobson, who had migrated from Russia, uh, then Jan Mukarovsky and Rene Velik. Noted quote from formalist criticism, literary criticism is a description and evolution of its object. Let's move to question number 10. It is defined as the chronological sequence of events in Russian Formalism, it is option A, Yuthet, Fabula, Imagery, Arrangement. Here your option B, that is Fabula, is the correct answer and we are going to see the highlighters quickly. Fabula, which means a story, is defined as the chronological sequence of event. It is the raw material of a story employed in narratology and describes narrative construction. The structure Sorry, the story was the raw material awaiting the organizing hand of a writer. Question number 11. What is Shudset? Here, Shudset is a story. Option B, great contributors to the formalism. Option C, plot. And option D is technique of characterization. So here, it is nothing else than plot. Okay. Shudset is plot and uh, Sudset is the plot of narrative which was strictly literary. It is an actual arrangement of fabula. It is the order and the manner in which the event are presented in the narrative of the writer. Let's move to question number 12. 
Opo Yaz group does not include option A Boris Ekenbaum, option B Osip Brick, option C Victor Sklovsky, Sklovsky, sorry, and option D Roman Jacobson. So here your option is the last one that is Roman Jacobson. Opoyaz group. Opoyaz group, it is the Society for the Study of Poetic Language. Victor founded in 1916. It was a prominent group of linguistics, linguists and literary critics in St. Petersburg. It includes Victor Skolsky and Boris Ekenbaum. Osip Boric and Yuri, sorry, Yuri Tenyanov. Tenyanov. Okay, let's move to question number 13. That is, defamiliarization is to option A. Distinguish between poetic language from practical language. Option B. Distinguish poetic language from emotional speeches. Option C. Distinguish poetic language from narrative language. Option D. Distinguish poetic language from prestige language. Here, option A, the very first one is the correct answer. That is, distinguish poetic language from poetic, sorry, practical language. Let's see the highlighters. Defamiliarization or ostraninine or making strange. Skol, uh, Skol Slovsky was best known for developing this concept. Victor Skolsky is the sky, sorry, essay art as technique in 1917 coined this term in opposition to Russian symbolist theories of art. He invented the term as a means to distinguish poetic language from practical language of the basis of formers that is poetic pers perceptibility. Question number, sorry, next point. He stated that poetic language is fundamentally different than the language we use every day and thus make more, uh, thus make difficult to understand. Poetic speech is framed in, is frame, poetic speech is framed speech while prose is ordinary. According to Sklosky, defamiliarization is by disrupting the mode of ordinary linguistic discourse. Uh, literature makes strange the world of everyday perception renews the leader's lost capacity for fresh sensation. Next question is question number 14. Structuralism means treats language as option A. It is a non-referential referential system. Option B. Meaning should be created by reader openly. Um, option C. It is a key process to the creation and communication of meaning. And option D. The analysis involves creating a new meaning. So, here option C is the correct answer that is a key process in the creation and communication of meaning. Uh, let's see the highlighters. Language, science and meaning. Language is the key, key process in the creation and communication of meaning. It is a self-referral system. All perceptions and understandings are framed by words. Meaning lies within the text, a coherent and Unified structure derived from pattern and order. The analysis involved uncovering these patterns and their meanings. Question number 15. Which of the following statement is not correct about course in general linguistics? Option A. The work formulated four major dichotomies. Option B. It was published post-mortuously in 1916 by former student Charles Bally and Albert Sechhiff. Option C. This is 
seminal linguistic work and option d it was written by bloomfield so here answer is option d that is bloomfield let's see the highlighters course in general linguistic that is Saussure's, that is Ferdinand de Saussure. Saussure's most influential work was published posthumously in 1916 by former students Charles Bally and Albert Sechheff on the basis of notes taken from Saussure's lecture in Geneva from 1906 to 1912. This is Saussure's seminal linguistic work. Saussure's formulated four major dictomies in his course in general linguistic. They are Lang parole, then Syncory dictionary and paradigmatic and syntagmatic and signifier and signified. Question number 16. Which among the following statement is not true? Option A. Lang means well-defined language and parole means individual language. Option B. Signifier is a concept whereas signified is image. Option C. Synchronic is related to comparison of languages whereas Diachronic is about change in the meaning of words over time. Option D. Syntagmatic is relationships signs occur in sequence or parallel and paradigmatic is in it individual sign may be replaced by another. So here our option B is correct one that is signifier is a concept whereas signified is image let's see the highlighters regarding lang first of all it means language as an abstract system it is well defined homogeneous object language is a system of sign that expresses ideas and is therefore comparable to a system of writing the alphabet of deaf mutes symbolic rights polite uh, sorry polite uh, formulas military signals etc parole whereas it is it indicates a speech it is an individual language it is unpredictable speech writing is also an example of parole because each act of writing a letter word a sentence is similar to voicing a letter word or sentence synchronic means comparison of language or how languages compare to each other at any given point in time diachronic means change in the meaning of words over the time it is based in the dictionary meaning of words let's see syntagmatic in, in syntagmatic relationships, signs occur in sequence or parallel and operate together to create meanings. The sequential nature of language. Next is paradigmatic. In it, individual sign may be replaced by another. Sign, anything that conveys meaning, essentially it is arbitrary. Friends, we are learning only till 16th for today because this is literary theory and it takes time to learn uh, very precisely. So what I would request you all to do uh, in the time which you have saved today, please go through it, revise it, okay, because this is going to take a bit more time uh, for you all to learn, alright, so please don't waste time. And if a, there is any questions, please let me know through WhatsApp messages and we will be back with more literary theory questions. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.